Hey guys, I'm Billy Davidson with Davidson Pressure Wash and Painting coming out of Hammond, Louisiana. Today is January 1st, 2019. Happy New Year's to everyone, by the way. Hope y'all all had a great, safe, happy holidays as we did. We have been working almost constant um, since uh, probably early February of last year. I think I had about three days off total. So um, it was a little uh, unusually busy. But we love doing this, and you know, a lot of that was daytime, nighttime shifts. So, I've been trying to put out some videos to help some of y'all out as much as I could. So, I figured I would uh, take this opportunity. We got a couple days off. We've been just having some incredibly bad weather here down in the Louisiana area a lot of rain and uh, high winds, and just it's been a mess. So, we are off today. We'll be back at it tomorrow. Uh, so I want to give you a little bit of background on myself. I know a lot of you guys watch these videos. Um, so uh, I started doing power washing straight out of high school. Uh, about a year after high school, I started uh, doing power washing. I did work in my uncle's bulldozing business, uh, clearing out swamps and making right-of-ways. I did that for about a year. Did a little warehouse work in between and saved up some money to buy my first power washer from Darton Tool many, many years ago. We're talking about the early 90s. So the equipment back then was just, um, compared to today, is, it was just no match for it. So I, uh, you know, had to do a lot of hard work back then to, you know, to make it and feed feed the family, you know, make a little money on, the, you know, here and there. So it wasn't all that great up front, but if I had some help, you know, back then there was no such thing as YouTube. So, um, you know, a lot of my stuff, I had to go to libraries and read books and stuff and try to figure out the business stuff, end of it and even mixing my chemicals and stuff. You know, there was really nothing much, much out there that we could do to, to learn other than hands-on experience. So, um, you know, if you're just starting in the business, uh, you're really lucky. Trust me, take my word for it. There's a lot of help out there for you. And, um, you know, I encourage anyone out there needing some help to reach out to me. And I'll give you my number at the end of the video, as I usually do. So today I'll be making a video on some of the things that, that I've learned through the years that has helped us grow our business. Primarily for the last 10 years, we've worked uh, mainly on commercial and government projects. Um, here the last three to four years has primarily been exclusive government projects with some commercial um, here and there in it. So um, before that, it was uh, about 99% resident, residential, which residential is fine. And you can do very well in it. It's just a different animal uh, when you come to a, a you know, a business uh, mode of going after jobs and landing them. So, you know, I'll primarily be speaking on residential and commercial work today. Those two things is probably what you'll be starting out in um, at first. So those are a little more easier to talk about and explain and different types of equipment you would need. So I'm going to be doing several video shots and I'll be kind of putting all this together in a little uh, program I have. So I don't know if you'll be seeing this tonight or the, over the next couple of days, but I'll definitely be getting all of it together to, to show you. So if y'all want to keep watching, I'll be back shortly and um, I'll start showing you some equipment and I'll be explaining some things that may help some of y'all out. All right, guys, I'm back with this small pressure washer. Well, I call it small, but it, um, you know, compared to what we ha we're using uh, these days, this is a small unit. It has a Honda engine and a uh, cat pump. It is uh, 4, 000, about 42, 4,200 PSI at uh, four gallons per minute. Obviously, it's on a cart. It's a pull rope. Um, the gas tank will probably hold about two and a half gallons. That gives you about two hours of run time or so. Um, this unit here would be a great residential unit. Um, this unit actually had not been used a whole lot. Um, we, Man, I don't think I've used it this in 2018 at all, other than starting up, keeping it running. But I'll show you a little about it. Um, so your gas goes on in the gas tank, obviously. You get a um, all filler cap down there, and then you have your um, your cap cat pump oil that goes in here, and you know that's pretty much it. So 
they're really easy to operate and easy to maintain. Usually these Honda engines um, start pretty pretty rapidly, even sitting up a couple pulls and it's and it'll be running. And I'll show you the sort of the business end of it. If I can get the camera down here, this is the water inlet. So this is I put this little thing on there just to give me a little extra room because when I had my pressure hose hooked. It was kind of hard to unscrew, so I just got a little six inch pigtail hose. So you put your water hose into there, you can run it straight off the customer supply, and your pressure hose snaps into there. And usually you run about 100, 150 feet of pressure hose on these machines, and they're good, you know. Um, you can wash houses all day long, you can do some, you know, some decent sized commercial jobs. Basically, there's two ways to apply soap with these things. I don't have them here with me. They, they out in the truck. But I'm sure if you're doing some research on it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So right here where your pressure hose um, connects, you can put in a downstream injector, which not all downstream injectors are created equally. So um, you would want to get a high draw downstream injector with the quick connects. And I usually get those off of Pressure Tech, and it's spelled uh, T E K dot com, Pressure Tech dot com. They have the hydro downstream injectors. You want to match it with your flow. So if you have a machine like this, it's four gallons a minute. You want to make sure you get a four gallon per minute uh, downstream injector. Basically, what that downstream injector is going to do is siphon soap and bleach and what we call SH and surfactants out of a bucket that'll usually be sitting right here by the machine somewhere. So that would be one way of applying your soaps. The second way to apply your soaps is using an X-Jet. And a lot of y'all may know what that is. It's basically a nozzle that goes on the end of your gun. And it has uh, about a 15-foot hose that sits in a bucket by your feet. And you can um, spray your soap on a wall. And then you got to sort of kind of move your bucket down with you. Or if you have a helper or something or a backpack. So those are the two primary ways you want to apply soap to a wall. And the pros and cons of each, the downstream injector, as I spoke about from pressure tech, those are going to give you about a 1 to 8 ratio, sometimes 1 to 10. I have gotten 1 to 5 out of them, so 20%. So if you do the math, if you got 10% bleach and you're downstreaming it, you're going to be getting somewhere about 1.5 to 2% on the wall. Um, just depending on the downstream. Or sometimes uh, you might only get 1% on the wall if you got 100 feet of hose on it because of the back pressure um, kind of affects the downstream ejector. So, you know, that being said, a lot of times that's all you need to clean vinyl side and some light mildew, light mold, you know, things like that. That may be all you need. And it works great because it's, it's plugged into the machine here. The bucket's sitting right here by the machine. And you just pull the trigger 150 feet away and start applying soaps. And you may have to apply two or three times. I know a lot of guys out there are thinking you just spray your soap once and you're good to go. But that's rare. You know, even with our best chemicals, sometimes we apply twice, sometimes three times, sometimes four times. Whatever it takes, we'll keep applying because that's a lot easier than getting up there pressure washing with a wand, if you know what I mean. So, your downstream injector is important. Now, like I said, not all downstream injectors are created equally. If you don't get it from pressure tech, um, you just don't know what you're getting. Some downstream injectors are like 1 to 20 ratio. I mean, you, could, you can damn near drink that water coming out of the end of it. It's just so diluted. It's not going to do much to your vinyl side and that you're spraying. Now, this is, we're talking about residential and light commercial work. So, those are some of the things to think about um, when you downstreaming. You're going to make sure your downstream injector is fitted for your machine. And also, it's easy to test it. Drop your downstream injector into a one-gallon um, bleach jug, just plain water. And then maybe put your end of your gun into a five-gallon bucket. Time it after you know, after you suck out your one gallon of jug, um, after you siphon your one gallon, see how many gallons of water you got in your five gallon bucket, or maybe two five gallons of bucket. And every gallon that you draw here, and every gallon that comes out the, the end of your nozzle, you just divide that if it's one to ten, 
1 to 20, 1 to 15, then you know your ratio. Thing with about an X jetter is the reason why I recommend an X jetter for a lot of the guys just starting out. The X jetter will allow you to buy soaps up to 50%. So if you got 10% in the jug, you could throw 5% on the wall, which is a lot of times way too strong. So you do want to dilute um, your chemicals if you are using the X jet. Usually, um, I tell people. It, you, ideally, I like to get about 2% on the wall, sometimes a little less, just depending on how bad it is. But So if you got 10% in a jug or a bucket, 10% SH or sodium hypochlorite, um, I like to get about 2% on the wall. So uh, sometimes my downstreamers, they do work on some of my other equipment that strong, but sometimes we just got to use the X jet. So those are the two ways to apply the soap using one of these machines um, and like I said this is a 4200 PSI machine four gallons per minute I personally got this at Lowe's a few years ago I think out the door it was like thirteen hundred dollars and it is a great investment um, you know you get a little bit of hose with it of course you gotta buy more hose and then you will need a surface cleaner now with this machine you don't need a buffer tank at all it'll run off of a customer spigot all day long and with no problem because it's only four gallons per minute and usually customer spigots put out six or five gallons per minute just depending on where you're at some of them put out 10 or 12 gallons per minute if it's putting out that much you're still good you don't have to worry about it putting out too much water you just screw it right in there and you're good to go um, so that is this machine starting out residential so, you know, if you did the math, let's say this machine's fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars now. Maybe the prices went up a little bit. You got to buy some extra hose because it comes with 50 feet of hose and it's just not enough. You'll be moving this thing around all day, dragging it around people's yard. So I like about 150 feet of hose on one of these small machines. Um, so your hose is that's going to run another couple hundred dollars. So you're up to, let's say, seventeen hundred. Then you need a surface cleaner. Three or four hundred dollars, you maybe twenty one hundred. Yeah, X jets and run one hundred and fifty. Plus, you need some buckets, so you get another two hundred there. You get twenty three hundred, and then you need some things like a step ladder. Maybe you have one, maybe you don't. You know, um, you know some buckets, uh, some waterproof jackets. You know, you're probably looking at twenty five hundred dollars if you, you know, bare minimum to get into the power washing business using one of these machines couple other things you would need some scrub brushes um you know some a lot of that stuff you know a lot of you guys have already but you know a lot of times you just step on it or break it or just left on a job you know any, any of that stuff can happen and of course you need a way to get around whether you're doing it in an suv with a small trailer or if you do have a truck um you're going to need some business cards maybe, maybe some magnet signs and maybe run a few Facebook ads, uh, get on Google business page, which is a free list. And I'd recommend anybody doing that right away as soon as you want to start. So, you know, maybe three grand you're looking at getting into the power washing business uh, from the get go. Um, now, you know, if you got a lot of uh, motivation, you probably get out and recover that money within a month. Um, you know, you're going to work. But you're going to have to not be shy, be able to knock on doors, meet people, greet people, you know, hand out business cards. But you can make it back in a month with no problem. So that would be the bare bones getting into the business. And as you go along in the business, you're going to upgrade. You, you're going to want to upgrade really quickly to larger equipment as you start to build up clients and make more money. So I'm, I'm going to stop talking about this little machine and I'm um, going to cut away from this video clip and go to... Um, our larger equipment and we'll talk about that a little more as you um, are moving up in your business you can see um, you know what you would need to be doing in the future and I'll talk about some prices of the equipment as well now I'm back um, like I was just showing you this smaller machine here I'm going to show you um, what we're using now a lot of y'all may have seen it in videos in the past but um, this is um, this is a trailer I've built a um, couple, I guess, back in September. So it's been three or four or five months ago. We run this thing all over already, so it might be a little dirty. But 
Um, the first trailer I built was a little small, a little narrow. So I'm going to talk about some things that, it, um, that I implemented on this trailer that may help y'all out as y'all move upward and start to grow your business. First of all, most important, um, when you go to upgrade your equipment, you're probably going to want to move to an 8-gallon per minute machine. Um, this is our number one unit, and that's the second unit over there. I have them bolted down, and I got some um, some anti-theft stuff on there. I really wasn't going to show on YouTube. But anyway, you want to bolt them down, chain them down really well, because although they heavy, you know, if you parked it, grab them some lunch, somebody really motivated probably could walk off with it, you know. So they are expensive, and you don't want that to happen. So you want to have them bolted down. And the second reason you know, God forbid you got into some little fender bender. You wouldn't want one of these machines flying off the trailer. So bolt them down, chain them down, do what you got to do. They come on a skid unit, so it's pretty pretty easy to, to get them secured to that frame. Um, so these are 8-gallon per minute machines. And this is um, this your air breather here. And I'm not going to take all that off, but it's pretty simple. It's just a little round air breather. And here's a muffler. It gets extremely hot while it's running, as you would expect. Um, we'll go down here. This is the, um, the intake for the cooling system. And, um, this is a large pump. It's, you know, it's rated at eight gallons per minute, but to be honest with you, um, every time I've tested them on every machine we've got, it really puts out 10, 11 gallons a minute, you know, just depending on what tip you have. And, um, this is a feed line. That from the tank, I'll show you that in a minute. And this is the um, the pressure hose where it snaps in. So a couple things I'm gonna talk about that shortly. And these are electric start. I'll show you. So you got a um, electric key right here. You got your um, your throttle. And so that be you know 100%. And of course that's on idle. And then you got a choke. So they, these are so nice. I mean. <laughs> And you know, you're up and running, so it's a lot easier than pull rope. And I don't think you could pull rope one of these uh, 24 horsepower. And it, so that's a GX690 24 horsepower uh, twin cylinder. So it'd be, you know, a lot to be pull roping. So basically, if you want to start it, just pull your choke out here. And it's, you know, I mean, it's just every time it runs, you know, perfectly. they great machines, those little Hondas are. These, um, you know, if y'all interested in getting a couple of these or even one, get with me. I got a, um, some people out of Florida I get these from. They got real good pricing, got different options on them, different unloaders, um, soft start, or your regular unloader. Kind of get, would get complicated to describe all that. But if y'all are interested, I can probably get you a better deal on that than probably anywhere. I mean, I haven't seen any other better deals. So we're going to go on. And talk about a few other things I've put on this trailer. These two machines obviously are electric start. So they come with little bitty tiny lawnmower batteries. So what I did, I just wired them to one large marine battery in that case. And of course I got the case buckled down to the uh, the wood floor really well. So And then my wires run into it. Just like a number four electrical wire is all you need. You know, if you need a little extension. This floor, is, you see it's red, obviously it's wood. Um, that is a rubber coating. That was another thing I learned from my other trailer build. Um, I didn't do the bottom of it because I, you know, I do want the wood to be able to breathe. So I did rubber coat the top of it and so far so good. It's, it's amazing. Uh, water gets on it and it just beads right up and you know doesn't really sit there. And trust me, you will spill water and chemicals and everything everywhere. So this is the um, buffer tank. It is a 275 gallon buffer tank. Um, they're heavy when they get full of water. I guess 21, 2200 pounds just for the water itself, not including your gas tanks, hose reels, machines, um, things that we put drums on the back, you know. So that brings up another point. My first trailer build was a single axle. I'll never do that again. So this trailer is a double axle trailer. And um, I'll show you, on my single axle, your tires would just, you know, you feel like that tank, man, it would just squat down to the rim. So double axle trailer, 
so much more beefier type trailer. Matter of fact, we fill up the tank and you can't even really tell it on, you know, on these tires. So you can actually, you know, we never travel with a full tank, but we'll definitely move around a parking lot or move, you know, from um, sometimes we work on a large commercial project, project. So, you know, I don't mind moving, you know, the tank, you know, half a mile through some little parking lot areas. I wouldn't get out on a highway with a full tank. But um, so, yeah, anyway, double axle trailer. And then everything else is, you know, stronger. You got a good, strong, solid thing. If you ever want to weld to it, you know, so your your tongue is beefier. So I would say if you're going with a trailer, man, try, try to go with a double axle from the get-go. Um, that was one of the mistakes I made. Uh, I went with a little small single axle trailer, which y'all may have seen some of that in the previous videos. And look, to be honest, we, we about run the wheels off that thing, you know, just over a two year period. So that, you know, we do a lot. Um, you know, it's we, we stay constantly on the road out there doing work day and night. So um, another thing I did, so I got two power washers. I got two fuel tanks. And these are 12 gallon fuel tanks. This was a very good decision to go with these. We can fill these up. They very rarely need to be refilled during a working shift. Um, the only thing, they only come with a single line pickup right here. And then you may notice some of these power washers, or I think all of them have two, what looks like two fuel lines. Well, one is actually a return line to the carburetor. And it's really not needed. You can unhook it. And so just mainly your main fuel line the only thing I will say about that, if you unhook that, that other um, return line, which is just like a, a breather line, some of these new gas caps, it got that new EPA stuff on it. So if you got this thing tight, it doesn't want to breathe too well. So uh, either you can put a pinhole in it somewhere, maybe with a little Dremel, which I haven't done that. I just mainly keep them kind of loose. You know, just where they'll breathe. This one, too. I'm not sure what would happen if you tightened it down and just ran it. I don't know if it would just stop using, you know, stop drawing the gas. Or it might collapse the tank. I I'm not even sure. So, I keep them just kind of loose. Rain don't even get in them. You know, you don't want to loosen it all up till it comes off. But, you know, I just tighten it all the way down. And then loosen it about a turn, turn and a half. And it breathes fine. You know, we'll fill those up to the whole 24 gallons between both of them. And, man, you could run, run, run. You know, you don't have to worry about getting gas. Another thing um, I want to talk about is these Siamese kits. These two power washers have a capability. This is actually a Siamese kit now on it. I just keep it there for, um, for storage. So these two are combined. And it comes out this hose right here. And then we could put our other pressure hose on it and run it to wherever we want. Listen, what I'm telling you, those two power washers together, you're looking at between 16 and 18 gallons per minute. You know, you still maintain that 3,500 PSI. It's not going to increase the PSI, but it definitely, you get the benefit of both machines' water flow. So with that Siamese kit, you get 16, 18 gallons per minute. 3,500 PSI, and it is amazing. I can shoot water, um, God, I don't know, six stories, easy. You know, I can take out dirt divers' nests, walls' nests, six stories up without even without even an issue. Just boom, it's gone. So, um, you know, we'll soap down uh, with one machine, maybe using a step ladder, and then go back, Siamese, you know, kit both these machines together and rinse it off and man, you're gone before you know it. So, um, so that was something else I wanted to talk about. This is um, my plumbing. I tend to keep things really simple. Come straight out of the tank, straight pipe, and um, feed this one over there, feed that one over there. And I'll show you on this side. If I can get over here, my garage is so full of stuff. I need to get in here and rearrange stuff. I have a um, a dump valve. If I can get over here, I'll show you. That's my dump valve there. 
basically I got it um, just coming out and this is really good I mean you're not dumping that water all over the trailer or what what have you you turn it off you know obviously that's gonna fill the tank you can barely turn it on you know if you want fill up a bucket wash your hands wash your boots face off whatever you need to do and when you go to dump it all out you just open it all up and you know this doesn't man this doesn't take two inch pipe doesn't take long for it to dump 275 gallons out usually and then of course you're not dumping it all over your trailer you're dumping it out here on the ground so and i think um this valve was like ten dollars or something so it ain't dirt cheap but but yeah so that's another thing that uh, i would highly recommend if you're going to build a trailer out here in the back, this is kind of a kind of area that we just put anything and everything in, just depending on where we're going, what we got to do. We got a ladder here now, one of these little little giants or whatever they call. It. It's a nice little ladder, you know. It's twenty foot extension ladder, but then it's a ten foot step ladder. Then it all folds up to I don't know, about five feet. It's heavy as heck, but it's real good and you know, a little surface cleaner. Um, let's see what else? Oh, I got this surface cleaner and the, the big surface cleaner and that, some extra hoses. Now there are times this space back here is um this is a 12 foot trailer, so you know this is a good little space back here. Sometimes we gotta take all this out and put our drum um drums back here with our SH in it, like 255 gallon drums to 110 gallons of SH. But I think that's about all legally we can carry, but. So, you know, we'll just throw this stuff in the back of the truck if we got to. And on the other side is my hose reel. Man, I, for years I never used a hose reel, and I regret it. We should have had a hose reel a long time ago. But that hose reel, uh, I got it from um, Tool Barn, I believe. And it's a general pump GP hose reel. Holds, I think, 450 feet. I got it bolted down to the back of the trailer there. Man, that's so much nicer than having to roll those, roll those hoses up and hang them somewhere. I've seen some guys hang them on the tank and, you know, just throw them in the back of the truck getting all tangled up. So hose reels a must. And, of course, you see the signs on the trail, on the tank. That is, um, that, that's always good, you know, has some signs. And I got a sign on the tailgate. It's kind of backed up against this wall, but um, I don't know if you could see it. But it, I got it from Vistaprint. And um, I just got it kind of, you know, tie strapped on there, and it's fine. The air it air blows through. It's got holes in it. You might not can see it, but it's got um, it's like you know the wind blows through it. So we've been on the interstate with it. It don't it just stay pretty tight. And I got a little um strap going around the back of it just to make sure. So yeah, that's some of the things we do. Um, I've learned, you know, like I said, the fuel tanks, the Siamese kit, the hose reel, double axle trailer, definitely is what you want to do when you move up to this, these larger equipments. And um, so basically the same thing on this deal, we, you have two options of spraying your soap and um, downstreaming or X jetting. You know, on, the, on this equipment here, that's about about your two options. Um, another thing I would point out, um, we have a 30 inch surface cleaner on the back and a 20 inch surface cleaner. Both of them are rated for the eight gallons per minute tips in the bottom of them. Be honest with you, the 20 inch surface cleaner will outdo the 30 inch surface cleaner. It is a little more work because you got to kind of work it side to side and Whereas the 30 inch, you just walk behind it like a lawnmower. But um, to give you some numbers, the um, the 20 inch, I can do 5,000 square feet an hour with it. That's rinsing and everything. The, um, the 30 inch surface cleaner, even the best I've got out of it was about 3,500 square feet an hour. So 20 inch, 5,000 square feet an hour. The 30 inch, 3,500 square feet an hour. But the 30 inches easier to push. I mean, you could walk back there and talk on your phone if you wanted to or text. You, know, you just walk behind it like a lawnmower and push it. Whereas that 20 inch, you gotta have two hands on it. So it is a little more work, but your production is higher. So those are some of the things I've learned um, over the years. These eight gallon per minute machines, they aren't cheap. But um, like I said, if y'all are looking into 
upgrading some of your equipment to a cold water unit, high flow cold water unit. I know some people out of Florida that can get you one at your front door probably for um, probably $1,500 cheaper than where you see it elsewhere. And it's the same machine, you know, so you're good to go. So anyway, I hope this helps. And like always, if y'all have any questions or comments or any suggestions or if y'all need any help with anything, you can always give me a call or text message me. My number is 985-345-0778. Now, I definitely appreciate y'all watching these videos I put out. I don't, um, as y'all see, I don't have commercials on them or what they call monetizing it. So I'm not making no money off of anything other than me going to work every night or whatever. So if y'all, um, you know, if y'all could subscribe to these videos, that'll let me know y'all watching them, you know, and I'll try to put out more videos, more content and things that may apply to some of the guys out there looking to get into the business or either upgrading. So I'm happy uh, 2019, I think it's gonna be a real great year for, for the power washing industry. There's a lot of new things coming out. So y'all stay tuned and I'll talk to y'all soon.